How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Aiden. Now, wow, okay, the Yankees really are not playing well. Let's just say it very kindly. I don't want to call it an implosion. I don't want to call it a collapse. But those are the two best ways to put it. This is going from being the best team in baseball to a team that looks like they couldn't compete with the athletics right now. And it's it's devastating, really, if you're a fan of this team. And, you know, of course, we are. And, you know, we're talking about this team all the time and writing about it and, you know, discussing on the podcast and making social media graphics and every single thing is Carlos Rodon's given up this many runs or, you know, Aaron Judge and Monsoto, the only people producing. Labor Torres is being benched. DJ LeMayu isn't playing. Jemai, who the hell is Jemai Jones? You know, what I mean? it's like, this is where we're at. We're looking to guys that are not starting caliber players to supplement guys who are traditionally solid MLB producers. Glaber Torres, the regression he's experienced this year, the facial expressions and the depressed look he has and the lack of hustle, it's inexcusable. It's inexcusable, right? And when you think about these fa these uh, variables and these, these kind of different, different aspects of how this team is faltering, you think to yourself, well, Glaber Torres has wrote himself a one-way ticket into free agency next year, and I know for a fact the Yankees are not going to be extending him. If they do, it's going to be on a very cheap one-year deal for him to compete, not even start. This guy has, has tanked his entire value going into a, in a contract year. It's disappointing. I mean, he has time to turn it around um, a, a second half of this year. And you know what? If he does well in the postseason, no one will forget. Well, no one will remember the regular season. But right now, you, you know, he just doesn't look the part. Uh, DJ LeMahieu, man, like as Ryan said a couple days ago, the guy's churning out more worms than anything. It's it's really bad in the infield. He's you know, lighten the grass ablaze with these ground balls. And, you know, I just don't know if there's a way back for these guys. I don't know. You know, DJ LeMay, he was the only player in Major League Baseball with 80 plate appearances and no extra base hits. That is very bad. And, look, if you're general manager Brian Cashman and you're looking to the trade deadline, you got to be looking to make some big moves. J.D. Davis is certainly not enough. But in this episode specifically, Aiden, we're going to talk about Carlos Rodon and what has happened to him, my friend. Oh, my goodness. He went from a guy that had... Um, you know, what a, a round of three ERA to a guy that now is what a four four six ERA four four two, a four five four FIP. I mean, he has imploded the last three games. Goodness gracious! What is your kind of initial impression from him after these couple of performances that are certainly trending in the wrong direction? He's crying in the dugout. Man, I don't want you to cry. I don't want you to look weak. I want you to go out and perform. Make it 162 million freaking dollars. Go and pitch a damn baseball. Um, that's all I want. I know it's easier said than done, obviously. And we're going to discuss why it's difficult and what's going on with him. But, you know, what, what are you thinking right now? I mean, Alex, I, I think, you know, I, I, this team's been so unwatchable for the last, I guess, almost two weeks now it's been. that's It feels like an eternity. But what I, what I see from Carlos Rodon can kind of be said for most of the team's problems. Like, you can go down the order and say this for everybody, and you can say it for people in the pitching staff. And it's a lack of adjustments. You got to adjust. I, I can't tell you how many times I heard from coaches growing up. I'm sure so many of you heard the same too. Baseball is a game of adjustments. You got to adjust and that's how you're going to win games. That's how you're successful in baseball. You can't just, you know, go forward with the same approach every single time. And that's what we see with a lot of hitters in the order. Glaber and DJ to name a couple and that's what I'm seeing from Carlos Rodon in his last few starts in his last three starts he has a 37 13.17 ERA a double digit ERA a 7.04 FIP and he's given up five home runs now the good news to me in in almost a way is that a I believe most of those home runs I'd like I think three out of five of those home runs came off of his fastball, and that's his biggest issue. His biggest issue has always been sequencing with that fastball and just being too predictable. He doesn't really have a third pitch. He has that slider that works. That's his put-away pitch, but it's his slider and his fastball, and he's not really mixing it up. I, I believe I saw a tweet from Ryan last night after the first inning, or maybe it was after the second inning. He threw 50% fastballs in one inning. That just can't happen, especially when you're getting lit up. You got to change up the sequencing there. You got to start throwing other pitches. He has a slider. That's working for him. It's It's been working for him. That curveball, I would like to see him get in mixed more. I'd like to see him throw that cutter more, but that's a very hard pitch to throw, and he's really only been developing it since the beginning of, 
I guess maybe last offseason, the beginning of spring training this year. But like I said, Alex, it's just a lack of adjustment. You can't go up there and continue to throw your fastball, fastball after fastball, and expect to you know be successful. It was the same issue in his start against Boston. He wasn't making good two-strike pitches, and he was throwing his fastball way too much. You can't be that reliant on a fastball approach. It just doesn't work in today's game. You got to have at least two good breaking balls, at, at least one that can put hitters away. But, you know, having a second breaking ball or a second put away pitch makes you that much better of a pitcher. And that's what Rodon needs to do. The good news is his stuff is still there. It's really just sequencing. But uh, yeah, Alex, it's been really tough to watch with him. It's, you know, reminiscent of last season when it's just you feel like the answer is right there, but it just you know, it feels so far away at the same time. Yeah, I mean, look, for me, the problem with Rodon is that he's healthy, right? This isn't a situation where he's dealing with a hamstring injury and a forearm injury and a chronic back injury. He lost weight. He's healthy. He's fine. He's just stinking it up. And that's where you that's where you kind of come to the conclusion that, well, damn, like, did this? Did he just regress exponentially over the course of two years? What is going on with the Yankees that they acquire these players and they immediately become shells of themselves? They get these pitchers and like, oh, this guy's going to be good. This guy's coming off two phenomenal seasons. And then suddenly you're getting guys who are just imploding. And it's, it's hard to sit here and say to yourself, well, you know, are we going to be able to trust this guy during the postseason? Right now, Carlos Rodon in the postseason – I, I wouldn't wish it against my worst enemy. In fact, our worst enemies are wishing that they get him in the postseason because that first inning, I mean, it's he's just getting shelled right off the bat. And yeah, he's like surviving for five innings, but he already gave up five, six, seven earned runs. I mean, you're, you're talking about a guy in his last three appearances has given up, what, 18 earned runs? I mean, it, more than that, actually. I think, sorry, tw- 20 earned runs? Is that it? Yeah, 20 earned runs in his last three games. That includes five... <laughs> Five home runs, okay? Five home runs. And by the way, 21 runs, 20 of them are earned. So it's not like they were because of defensive lapses or errors. He gave them up because he was not playing well. Um, And look, this is a player who had a couple of really great starts. Like during the first uh, 10, 12 starts of the season, he looked pretty solid. The last three games, though, I I don't know what it's been. I don't know if it's velocity. I don't know if it's confidence. To me, it just seems like it's a mental thing for Carlos Rodon. Um, Look, Garrett Cole, we're going to give him a break because he's just coming back from a major injury, and I feel as though he deserves that time. I mean, he will get better. He will start to, you know, pick up steam here. Um, But, man, Rodon is is regressing really, really quickly, and Nestor Cortez also volatile in his performance, and Luis Heal is starting to regress to the mean as well. You know, maybe those the innings are just getting a little bit too high for for Heal, and the Yankees want to give him a little bit of a break. They could really use some Clark Schmidt, Cody Poteet right now just to take some slack, some pressure off of these guys who could use the rest. The All-Star break couldn't come fast enough right now. I'll tell you what, though. This team, I don't think, is going out and getting starting pitching. I think that Cashman believes in these guys. I think that he believes in Cole. He believes in Rodon and Clark Schmidt and Nestor Cortez and Heal and Poteet. He thinks that that's a fine group, and on paper, you could argue it's a really good group. It's not just a fine group. It's a really quality rotation. Um, you know, when you look at the bullpen, I definitely think we're going to see some moves there. But do you think they're going to make any moves in the rotation? Because to me, it looks fine. It's just more so they're not playing well. Yeah, no, I, I don't think any kind of rotation acquisition would be made out of, you know, a need for better performance. I think it would be more a need for just depth and eating up innings. Now, you, you got a lot of guys in this rotation that, you know, have had injury issues at some point in their career, whether it's recent or, you know, not so recent, you know, you go, got Cole, you know, coming off of that elbow injury, you got Rodon dealing with that shoulder last year. He's dealt with stuff throughout his career. Nestor has always had things hindering. Now you got Schmidt, who's, you know, his, his arm too. These guys all have injuries. He'll coming off. He's basically coming off of Tommy John surgery. You guys, you got to limit these guys' innings. I think that was something that, you know, we we were telling ourselves for the first couple months with this Yankees rotation. Yes, they're pitching so, so great, and it's amazing to see how great they're pitching without Garrett Cole, but, you know, the other shoe is going to drop at some point. And, you know, you got to, you can't just expect these guys to be able to pitch like this for over a 200 inning clip. 
you're going to have to give them some rest at some point because the modern MLB pitcher just does not pitch that much innings. They just don't. So I, I think if they go out and get anything at the deadline for the rotation, it's going to be, you know, your kind of, I don't know, J.A. Happ type acquisition where you just get a guy who eats innings. They traded for like Lance Lynn in 2019. That was a really weird Yankee stint. Um, but it, if really at the deadline, you're focused on getting swing and miss in the bullpen. You got some guys coming back. You got Scott F. Ross coming back. I think that's a guy who, once he slots back into the Yankees bullpen, we're going to see some improvement there. But the Yankees need more swing and miss stuff. We've been talking about a few guys over here like Tanner Scott, Hunter Harvey. Um, but yeah, really, it's the corner infield and the bullpen. That's where you're going at the deadline because those are just really, really horrid positions, even second base. But um, I, I think the Yankees are definitely going to focus on the bullpen and I guess like third base more than the rotation. And if they do add anything in the rotation, it's going to be like a flyer in some deal where the Yankees could get some innings eater if they're trading for some infielder. Yeah, I mean, right now, I think that they're we're going to see some pretty, uh, you know, active moves from Cashman at the deadline right now, mostly in the bullpen. Um, you know, I wrote about today, Jim Bowden of The Athletic floated the idea of maybe Jazz Chisholm being an opportunity for the Yankees to explore. You know, obviously, he wants to play second base. He is also capable of playing in uh, center as well. But, you know, with Glaber performing the way he is, and third base is not really a, a you could say, um, there's not a lot of options at third base. Ryan McMahon, Rockies are doing Rocky things. They're not trading a guy and having a career season. Usually, you know, you have a guy in a career year, pretty good time to trade him. He's been a below average hitter his entire career, suddenly having a good season. And the Rockies are like, no, no, we're going to keep him. Like, okay, Colorado, you keep doing dumb stuff. We'll keep watching and laughing. Um, but they should move him. That's that's just the, the, the fact of the matter. Um, if they don't, there's not really any hot corner guys to acquire. If you're the Yankees, you go after a first baseman. You go after a guy like Paul Goldschmidt. You got to go after a guy like Christian Walker. These might be opportunities for you on expiring contracts. Josh Bell. Don't want Josh Bell or Pete Alonzo. The Mets are not trading us Pete Alonzo. I'd rather go after a guy like Walker or Goldschmidt who, you know, veteran experience, decent defense, and, you know, have a decent bats to him too. So, you know, I don't, I'm not betting on Anthony Rizzo returning and providing, like, exponential value. And Ben Rice, he's just so young. Like, is he going to be able to compete during the postseason? Probably not. He's, you know, he's fine now as a holdover, but playoff baseball with a rookie at first base, you're asking for trouble, right? And then second base, Glaber Torres, do we think he can turn it around? I think there's a decent chunk of fans that believe that there's still hope, and I, I would be one of them. I think there is hope, but how much hope, the, uh, how much slack do we give him until that hope starts to wear thin? You know, do you start to think, well, Jazz Chisholm from Miami, he's a what, free agent in 2027, a couple years left on his deal in arbitration. Um, you know, is that an option? You know, I know Jim Bowden floated the idea of maybe a Will Warren, uh, Jay Savina, and a Everson Pereira package for for uh, you know Chisholm, who's a tremendous base runner, some underrated power, and he's got some swag. You know, this Yankee team lacks swag sometimes. They just are kind of boring, and they have no energy, and they're dull, and they're and they're dead inside. And moments like this, when they're going through these cold streaks. It feels like there, there's no life. It feels like the soul's been, it feels like a dementor sucked the soul out of them. So like that's kind of how I feel at the moment. Like this team looks like they, they have no life. Like you know, Judge is the captain here and he's producing at a very high level. But the rest of the team, they look unmotivated. They look depressed. They are hanging their heads. And this is when we see the Yankees collapse. And to get out of it, they need a heroic performance. They need a really great pitching performance to turn this thing around. And nobody's willing to step up. Um, but with that being said, you know, some big base running, a nice defensive play. How many times? Glaber Torres is on pace for over 20 errors this season. The guy basically might as well not have a freaking glove. Meanwhile, you have Aaron Boone out here saying, oh, well, you know, he looks just really smooth the way the way he does it. It's a little bit unorthodox, but it's okay because he does, he does pretty well. He's not doing well. He has a career low fielding percentage on pace for a career high in errors. He is, what is, what is negative four defensive runs, maybe more than that at this point. He's horrible defensively this season. I don't know what Aaron Boone's talking about. He's just trying to save face, protect his players, and I can appreciate that. I can commend him for that. But anyone with any vision can see that Torres is not a good defensive player this season. And sometimes he is, sometimes he's not. Any any year, it's like playing Russian roulette with him. You don't know what version you're going to get. You know, at this point, maybe it's worth going out and getting a guy 
like a Jazz Chisholm, I know he's overrated by a lot of people, but he's better than Glaber Torres, and he can run bases, and he can make some defensive plays. So maybe that is an option for the Yankees. There are others, you know, that I know guys like Alex Bregman stand out, but a lot of people will say, comments already on the way. We don't want Houston Astros players because they cheat, blah, blah, blah. I get it. But Bregman's better than anything we've got. And if he's out, he's available, then maybe you have to make a move. But guys, don't blink. The Astros are kind of good again. Like, <laughs> they're making their way back up the standings pretty damn quickly. Um, they're in second place right now in, in, in the West. And they're wait, four and a half games out from first place to the Mariners. They're not trading anybody. They could probably make a push in the postseason because they're getting better. And the Yankees are getting worse. And they see, they smell blood in the water. So, you know, what are you thinking right now in terms of the infield, second base? Um, you know, I know right now, like, just the idea of Jazz Chisholm, any thoughts about that? But right now... You know, with the available options, it's really first base or second that really stands out to me as as actual targets that the Yankees might be able to add to this equation. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, the the infield, you know, the trade market for the infield looks really thin right now. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've been waiting and waiting for, you know, some kind of option to come up, like some kind of team, you know, playing worse and worse, but it, it just isn't happening. I know like one idea that, that someone has floated out there is like Jonathan India. I just don't know, like if I can in good conscience say that I want the Yankees to pick up Jazz Chisholm or Jonathan India, because I just don't, I just don't see it ending well. Those guys do have control and maybe too much control, but I mean, they got to figure something out. I, I think the idea of Christian Walker in pinstripes is amazing. I think he would slide in perfectly with this lineup, giving more protection to Judge and Soto because that's what they need right now. Because if the Yankees, the strategy for pitching to the Yankees right now is just pitch around Judge and Soto and then get the rest of the guys out. We saw it two nights in a row against the Mets. The, the Mets loaded the bases up with no outs, and then they just Houdini'd out of it. They didn't have to worry about Judge and Soto. They just put them on base, and then the Yankees just you know shot themselves in the foot. But a guy like Christian Walker would provide protection where you know you can't just put Judge and Soto on. That's that's the thing. The Yankees need another world beater in this uh, in this trade deadline. They need to add another one of those in their lineup, but. I'm not I'm not sure it's really there besides like a Christian Walker or maybe if you get Paul Goldschmidt and he's back to form but you know th the rest of the the you know market is thin I know some have uh suggested Luis Renjifo that that could be interesting but it's it's really not looking great I'm sure over the next couple weeks especially you know when we get to the all-star break we'll start to hear some more names that'll you know become available but there, there's a huge race in the NL for a wild card. Like pretty much every team is in it. So a lot of teams are not going to want to sell. And a lot of teams are kind of in the AL wild card race as well. So it's, it's looking really, really thin. And that's why I think a lot of this Yankees lineup has to start figuring it out because this, th this problem isn't going to be completely solved just by adding some deadline pieces. I don't know. I don't know about you, Alex. If if you see any other names that can just fix this team right away, and the offense will be back to what it was, but I don't see that name on the market. Yeah, I mean, look, right now, if you're the Yankees, it's a, a wait and see equation. But I do think that uh, there's time. You know, we have about a month until the trade deadline actually rolls around here, so we'll see what happens. But you know, I think everyone can agree that there's going to be needs, and there's going to have to be some moves made by Cashman. Um, it's just a matter of how aggressive and how much he wants to spend in terms of capital in his farm system or MLB uh, caliber talent. So we'll see what happens, guys. Always happy to hear your thoughts and opinions down below in the YouTube comment section. Make sure to like and subscribe as always. And we'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode. Perfect. Perfect.